Science has come a long way toward understanding the building blocks of matter. The ancient Greeks, Galileo, Isaac Newton, and scores of other scientists have all played roles in developing modern atomic theory. In the past hundred years alone, physicists have discovered that atoms are not solid and that electrons rotate around the nucleus in complex orbits. But does understanding the atom stop at electrons, protons, and neutrons? The answer is no. Modern physics examines particles at the subatomic level. Some of the smallest particles are called quarks. Quark theory has been around since the mid-1960s, but a quark has never been isolated. No one has ever seen a quark. So, you might ask, how do scientists know they exist? The answer comes from data collected at high-energy particle accelerators, like this one at Fermi Lab in Illinois. At Fermi, particles are accelerated to nearly the speed of light around this four-mile underground track. We use an accelerator as the very opposite of an atomic bomb. An atomic bomb converts mass into energy whereas an accelerator converts energy into mass. We consume energy to produce new particles. Scientists start with ordinary atoms of hydrogen. High voltage electricity releases the protons from the hydrogen atoms. Billions of protons and antiprotons are then driven into the accelerator. The protons are in the machine. We're now in the countdown. Electric energy is used to force them to travel round and round in opposite directions. With each pass, their speed, and therefore their energy, increases until they are traveling at nearly the speed of light. They are then smashed together in head-on collisions. By studying the patterns made by the new particles that are created in the collisions, scientists are able to determine the properties of the particles and their interactions. The tests have been repeated and the results have been duplicated in enough experiments to convince us that quarks are real. And just as fundamental today as the familiar electron, proton, and neutron were once thought to be. Quarks come in three paired types that physicists call flavors. They are up and down, charm and strange, and top and bottom. It's the technology behind high energy accelerators that helps scientists confirm the existence of subatomic particles. Will new technology help scientists find the smallest constituents of matter?
Carlton, Thompson, or Rutherford and Bohr, Schrodinger and Heisenberg, and many, many more. Used their brains to venture in the realm of inner space and found the world of the atom was a weird and wondrous place. Dalton did experiments and said, I think it's clear. Atoms are tiny indestructible spheres. Thompson worked with cathode rays, said, I disagree. A plum pudding model makes much more sense to me. A new chapter in atomic theory started to unfold when Rutherford played around with atoms made of gold. When a few of his alpha particles came bouncing back, he hypothesized the nucleus had knocked them off the track. Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford, and Bohr, Schrodinger, and Heisenberg, and many, many more used their brains to venture in the realm of inner space and found the world of the atom was a weird and wondrous place. Bohr saw spectral lines for hydrogen and said, it seems to me, electrons move in orbits with specific energies. Heisenberg said, forget it, there's no way to know the orbit or a path where the electron's gonna go. Schrodinger used lots and lots of fancy mathematics, made a model of the atom based on quantum mechanics. It has orbitals, and those are based on probability. The atom is a fuzzy blob of pure uncertainty. Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford and Bohr, Schrodinger and Heisenberg and many, many more used their brains to venture in the realm of inner space and found the world of the atom was a weird and wondrous place. Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford and Bohr, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, many, many more Use their brains to venture in the realm of inner space Found the world of the atom was a weird and wondrous place